Well, I did it. I bought an A1 Mini. Was that a mistake? I don't know. We're about to find out. Let me tell you a little backstory while I unbox the A1 Mini and set it up. If you follow 3D printing much, you probably already know, but there's been some unfortunate news about Bamboo Labs locking down their firmware recently, and although they might be making some changes to that, I'm not exactly excited about this news. But I ordered the A1 Mini before the news about the update had been released. This video is not going to go into all the details about the firmware update, as many other YouTubers have already covered this topic, but I can't just ignore the update altogether either. Bamboo Labs is not sponsoring this video, and they have no knowledge of me making it. I purchased this machine with a combination of my own money and some Bamboo Labs gift cards I had earned from sharing my models on MakerWorld. I've been using Bamboo Labs flagship printer, the X1 Carbon, for a while now, and I've been overall pleased with its performance as a no-fuss, easy-to-use, reliable machine with consistent quality. Honestly, printing on a Bamboo Labs printer gave me back my love for 3D printing and made me enjoy 3D printing all over again. So why did I order the A1 Mini 3D printer? Well, there's several reasons. The reality is, I wanted to see if the printer was actually any good. I regularly have people ask me what kind of 3D printer they should get if they're new to the hobby, and I wanted to see if I was comfortable recommending this entry-level machine. This printer has been a popular one in the 3D printing community, and many of my customers print on this machine or other similar mini printers. I already own a Bamboo Labs Carbon X1, which I've been happy with, but it is really nice to have a reliable companion printer for smaller parts. I have some older Creality machines, but their speed and accuracy are a little lacking compared to modern printers. So is the A1 Mini really plug and play like Bamboo Labs says? Well, kind of. I admit that if I weren't trying to film the whole process, the setup probably would have gone a little bit faster, but not much. I've been 3D printing for many years now, and from opening the box to actually starting my first print, it was probably closer to an hour, not 20 minutes, like they say on their website. Unpacking, removing the screws and foam, adding the spool holder and the wiper, that all took about 15 to 20 minutes. But then there was the initial calibration, which took almost 18 minutes, followed by the firmware update since leaving the factory, which took another several minutes, followed by the prompt to lubricate the Y-axis, which took another several minutes. Sure, you could probably skip all these extra steps and get to printing right away, but I wouldn't recommend it. So after a more realistic setup time, about 45 minutes to an hour, I was finally ready to print. I chose to print a 20 minute Benchy, which has also been in the news recently. I won't go into details, but if you're interested, check out Zach Friedman's video. I think it's currently the best one on the Benchy topic. I'll put a link down in the description. The Benchy was already pre-sliced on the printer and it came out pretty good for a single arm bed slinger, but definitely not the best Benchy I've ever seen. It struggled a bit with bridging and sharp details, but if it was slowed down a little bit, I'm sure I would see better results. I then printed a spear tip from my newest model set, Winthrop's Build-A-Prop Workshop, which is a modular 3D printable prop set, more on that in a minute, but I thought we'd make this interesting and compare the quality of a Bamboo X1 Carbon and an Ender 3 Pro that's running Clipper to what I'm getting off of the A1 Mini. Real quick, I wanted to share my newest project with you, Winthrop's Build a Prop Workshop, which has over 300 modular prop models that screw together so that you can build things like swords, spears, axes, maces, staffs, and more. You can even store dice in the handles and reinforce the blades with wood dowels. If you want to pick up the files to print these props yourself and support the channel in the process, you can grab the whole set over on my website, zykit.com. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Now let's get back to the video and see the quality from the test prints. I put the brown test print from the Ender 3 Pro in the middle, but the gray prints were printed on the A1 Mini and the X1 Carbon. Can you tell the difference between the two? I can't. Pause the video and leave me a guess in the comments. Which one is which? Is the A1 Mini on the left or the right? Are you ready to know which one is which? The print on the left is from the X1 Carbon, and the print on the right is from the A1 Mini. The upgraded Clipper Ender 3 Pro doesn't quite keep up to the Bamboo Labs printers, although it wasn't as far behind as I would think. The speed with a 0.6mm nozzle was on par, 
but the quality was a little lacking in comparison. This could probably be adjusted with a little more fiddling, but honestly, I don't have a lot of time for fiddling. That's why I like the Bamboo Labs printers. On the outside, the print quality from the A1 Mini looks just as good, if not better than the X1 Carbon, but I did notice that functional parts, although good on the A1, they were not quite as smooth fitting as parts from the Carbon X1, which makes sense considering the X1 costs almost six times more than the A1 Mini. I only had one tall print fail because it got knocked over, so I probably should have added a brim to this, but this is a fairly common issue with bed slingers, things getting knocked around sometimes. There was a little bit of wasted filament for the purging and calibration, but that was also minimal. It's nice to have a built-in time-lapse camera, but the quality is just okay and it uses an inconvenient AVI format, which I had to convert to an MP4 to show you in this video. You might be thinking that I don't like this printer, but that's not actually true. I really like a lot of things about this 3D printer. I love how compact it is, the price point is quite desirable, and the prints on this machine are coming out almost as good as Bamboo Labs' much more expensive flagship printer, the X1 Carbon. I'm not sure what the future holds for Bamboo Labs with their current firmware decisions and making their printers less usable with third-party devices and slicers, but if you are new to 3D printing and just want an affordable printer that works, you don't mind being locked into the Bamboo Labs ecosystem, then you really can't go wrong with the A1 Mini. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Head over to Zykit.com if you want to help support the channel and pick up the model shown in this video. Leave me a comment about what you think about all this Bamboo Labs drama. I'll leave you with my pros and cons list, and I want to thank you again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!